Hey everyone, welcome back and happy Tuesday. Okay guys, before we get into the Shannon Bedore headed to treatment of it all and also messy two T's in a pod, which listen, I got to give it to them. They bring the content, so I'm not mad about it. I just wanted to start off by talking um, a little bit about what's going on tonight. So I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be posting on the community tab polls and everything for you, but I am pre-recording all of my videos because I will be at the dentist all day. But Jason and Josh will be going live at 11 p.m. Eastern tonight for Anchor Watch. So get ready for that. It's always a great time. That's 8 p.m. Pacific, and you won't want to miss it. In the meantime, I say let's get into the mess, right? Here we go. Okay, guys. So, Shannon Bedore, we know that after her accident, which that was a terrible accident, but it could have been much worse, like we talked about before. You guys saw the video, right? Where she hit the house. Um, a lot of her friends have been speaking out about this. And Jeff Lewis is one of them. And Jeff Lewis shared that Shannon right now hasn't been staying at her own house because her house is just ridden with paparazzi. Actually, Kelly Dodd even shared that. Kelly Dodd and Rick Leventhal. So I was wondering what kind of treatment would she be getting, right? Well, Jeff said that after speaking with her, she is not doing an inpatient treatment. She's going to be doing a very intensive outpatient treatment five times a week. And he said that he's a little concerned about that because he thinks that that might exhaust her. I personally, and I've never been in treatment for anything, but I personally felt like this would be a bad move on her. And who am I, right? Honestly, you guys can be like, shut the fuck up, Adam. And I get that. I get that. But just as an outsider looking in, and it's so easy to judge or speculate. But I was thinking, if you deal with your day-to-day -day problems by having alcohol, then it would probably be not a great way to go through intensive therapy and then be able to go back home because then maybe you might get into more alcohol. But let's get into this part. So we know that Shannon Bedore stepped out with her dog, her golden retriever named Archie, and that was in Laguna Beach. And this is when she was wearing her cast. And we also know, if you guys haven't heard about this, there was an investigation from Newport Beach's uh, Police Department's Animal Control Unit who said that they've been looking into the incident of potential endangerment of Archie. They said at the time, we don't have animal endangering laws like you would with children, but we do have animal cruelty laws. So he's going to look a little bit further into that. When this all happened, Shannon requests that Archie be dropped off at someone's house to take care of him while she was dealing with her situation, but nobody shared where Archie actually went. Although it was not confirmed where the dog had ended up, he was likely taken to her ex, John Jansen's house, and John has been known to watch the dog for Shannon, and in the weeks since her arrest, they've been seen together on numerous occasions. As John continues to support Shannon, others are concerned. One friend told Radar Online, Everyone in Newport knows. Mm. According to the insider, Shannon used to be out nearly every night, and now her inner circle is worried that she may be depressed, saying she was not happy since moving into a condo after her 18-year-old twin, Stella and Adeline, left town for college. Hopefully, this is a wake-up call. That's what a source said, saying that her arrest, they believe, it was her hitting rock bottom. Yeah, I mean... Even Gina Kay, she spoke out about this and she said, it's not a good place to be mentally, emotionally. You do have this platform and this celebrity and you make a really bad decision and you think, well, that's it for me. I'm just glad everybody's okay. But like, it sucks. It's hard. I feel bad. I feel really bad for her. Now, getting back to the treatment program, we're now hearing that she is supposed to be starting it. If, if she didn't start it yesterday, she would be starting it today. Her intensive outpatient treatment program, which is really none of any of our business, right? But the fact that you're on a reality show and this was so highly publicized and also that your friends who have very, very big platforms are also talking about it. I think that that's exactly how this is going to continue to go. But my question is, is now that she's starting her treatment and she's doing so before she goes to the court hearing, what does that treatment look like? Like how long are you going to be putting yourself through the treatment and I know it looks good on paper, right? Because 
based off of what Emily D. Baker and other attorneys said, she's going to lose her license. She's going to have to pay fines. She's most likely not going to do any jail time. And she's going to have to do some sort of AA counseling or rehabilitation program. Yeah. Well, speaking of some of her friends, Teddy Mellencamp and Emily Simpson, I wanted to also bring up a video from Two Teas in a Pod because they're talking about Bethany Frankel. Bethany Frankel is getting a lot of shit right now. And Jessel Tank, who was recently on Watch What Happens Live, she said, Bethany Frankel, her and Kate Chastain both agreed on this, that she's making a lot of noise right now, yes, but she seems to be one of the most overrated housewives. And they don't understand where she's coming from with all of this. Bethany Frankel did go on and say, she put a huge like three page letter on her Instagram and said, I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. I want to hear what the ladies have to say about this. Wait, here we go. Seems very self-serving in a way to try to bring down Bravo and Andy. She also constantly makes reference to only making 7,200 or whatever. She says that multiple times about how her season, her first season, she only made 7,200, 7,200. I, I mean, that's what happens when you start a new show. They're taking a gamble. Everybody's taking a gamble. You don't know if it's going to take off. There isn't a big budget. Clearly, you're not making millions of dollars because everybody's gambling on a, on a new show. In this interview, it seems very self-serving. I mean... Okay, so I think their point here is the simple fact that in this interview, she has mentioned multiple times, kind of like what she did in the interview with Rachel, she mentioned $7,200, $7,200. But she went on, she's also said a couple of times, by the end of it, she was making millions of dollars. She was, if not the highest paid housewife, her and Nini both sitting in those chairs together, they were both two of the highest paid housewives in Bravo history to date. Now, does that mean that Nini should have endured anything like she's explaining to us? Absolutely, freaking lutely not. And the fact that Jason was talking to me about this and he goes, wow, after listening to this podcast, Nini was really like taken out of the game. And I was like, no, I know it's, it's kind of crazy to listen to. And he said, I don't think that's an Andy thing. I think that this is above Andy's pay grade. I think that that would be, if anybody, it would have to be the network. And I started thinking about it and I'm like, yeah, we do give Andy Cohen a lot of power in these situations. And I think that he would be a part of a lot of the conversations when it comes to talent and lawsuits that revolve around the talent. But I don't know how much power he has to have somebody completely taken out of the entertainment industry. And if you guys didn't listen to the podcast, you should go back and listen to it because Nini details that she had opportunities for TV shows. She can never do the TV shows. We heard at one point that it was Wendy Williams' fault. Now we're hearing that it's Bravo's fault based off of what she's saying. She also said something about she could never have a podcast. I'm wondering, anybody can start a podcast. So I'm guessing that maybe that podcast had something to do with she couldn't get a deal for a podcast. But the, from the podcast to the, she was on Broadway. She was working on American Horror Story. She was doing, I believe it was American Horror Story. It was something to that effect. She's done so many things. And then boom, all of a sudden, she went from being a real housewife to having all of these extra gigs, pod, well, podcast interviews. She had, you know, Broadway shows. She was on TV and film to just sort of disappearing. And then just talking whenever she wanted to let us know on her own social media platforms or with Carlos King. I want to hear what you guys think. Go ahead and comment below. What are your thoughts about Shannon's treatment plan? Let us know. And before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, show some love, and check the comment section for Jason and Josh tonight. I'm going to pin that link. Love you.